um, we will go over the basic uh, concepts and statistics for the, uh, that we use in our investment class. Um, so first, we will talk about this difference. In class, um, during class, I talked uh, about this difference a few times already. Uh, but I thought maybe it's useful to go over this idea once again because this distinction is the basis for many concepts that we will use um, in discussing statistics and other related concepts. So to start with um, an example that is familiar to you, let's uh, talk about the demand and supply model. Because I suppose that everyone is familiar with demand and supply. So when we uh, talk about the demand and supply model, we draw a graph like this. So we have quantity on the horizontal axis <coughs> and price on the vertical axis. And we uh, draw a demand curve, a demand function. Um, well, we sometimes look at it from here or from there as well, but let's uh, follow the more traditional way. That is, we think about demand as a function of price, and demand also quant uh, supply also as function of price. <coughs> And we say, after this, that in equilibrium, demand equals supply. So let's look at this thing um, again, emphasizing this distinction between ex ante versus ex post. So to focus on really important part, let's ignore the P part here. <coughs> so on the one hand, we interpret <coughs> demand and supply as variables. That is, demand can take many values. When price is low, the demand uh, is higher. When price is high, demand is low. Also, we uh, look at, we consider supply as a variable. It can take many different values. While here, when we think about equilibrium, demand must equal supply. So if the market is in equilibrium, then in equilibrium, we will always have this identity. So one side, we say demand and supply can take many different values. Here, we say that demand and supply should be identical. So how can we say these two things at the same time? And that's where this ex ante and ex post distinction um, comes in. So the way we think about it is, Let's start with the ex post. That's the easier uh, part. Ex post means after the fact. Um, so after everything is decided and we observe the market, then in the market, we observe in terms of quantity, we observe only one value. Um, that is the equilibrium value. So um, when we observe the value, so the observed Observed quantity must be equal to both demand and supply. So after the fact, ex post, we have only one value, and the value of the demand is determined, and value of the supply is determined. In that case, we have only one value. Therefore, these two have identical values. Ex ante, before the fact, before we observe, the, uh, the actual quantity in the market, we are thinking of demand and supply as um, <coughs> variable. 
So when we look at them as variable, we are uh, saying that these variables can take, um, these variables will take some value but out of many possible values. So when we think of these as variables, we don't fix the value. And that's why we can think of the possibility of where supply is different from demand. Um, but after the fact, demand and supply, we only observe one thing. So then we cannot really talk about different demand and supply. So this is the example, but <coughs> a bit more generally. So what we, um, what you need to know in this discussion is that when we take the ex ante perspective, we can call them variable, so they can take uh, possibly different values. When we take ex post perspective, we fix the value because we actually observe the realized values. Okay. Um, <coughs> So now let's talk about this distinction in a slightly different setting. So we talked about variable. And realized values. <coughs> When you talk about statistics, we have somewhat different concept that is related, but not exactly the same thing. Uh, we have something called random variable. So what's the difference between variable and random variable? Again, when we talk about random variable, we are taking ex ante perspective. That's why it's called variable. It can take different values. By saying random variable, we are uh, saying that we can think of the probability that this variable can take a particular value. So back to demand and supply example, let's think about demand. So if the demand quantity can take, say, 50, 100, or 200, and 400, if these are possible value, and if we say D may take one of 50, 100, 200, 400, um, then we are considering this as a variable. And in this, uh, at this point, we don't call this variable random variable. If we want to say random variable, we are adding some extra information here. And we are thinking of the probability that D may have, will have value 50. And we also think about the probability that D has the value of 100. And we also think about the probability that D has value of 200, the probability that D has value of 400. So for example, uh, we may believe that there is 10% probability that D will be 50, 20% probability that D will be 100, and perhaps 30% um, probability that D will be 200, and 40% probability that D will be uh, 400. So if we write down this way, then we consider D as random variable. So when we talk about random variable, there is extra probability information that we uh, consider together with this uh, part of the information. So that's the difference between variable and random variable. That is, we have some extra information or extra belief about the probability of this variable taking particular values. 
Now, the but random variable is also a variable as well. So as we can make distinction between variable and realized values, we can talk about the realized uh, values of a random variable as well. So uh, this is what we uh, think about before the fact. After the fact, we will observe only one value out of these four, and that will be the realized value of the random variable. So you can write here as well. Realized value. <coughs> Um, okay. Um, so when do we use ex ante concept and when do we use ex post concept? Of course, in the textbook, um, quite often we talk about the relationship among variables in the ex ante sense. But when you actually do some real work, then you will have to find out the actual data. And you have to look at whether actual data corresponds to what theory predicted. Once you start working with actual data, then of course that will correspond to ex post. Um, so in finance class as well, uh, when we talk about return, so when we talk about what is the distribution of return, what is the mean of the return, what is the standard deviation of return, um, that's the in ex ante sense. But when you actually check what the return is in uh, reality, so we, if you go to the website, now down uh, website, and see the return to Samsung Electronics or Hyundai Motors, then what you see there will correspond to this side. And when we discuss um, the properties of return, we, of course, switch back and forth between these two. And you need to understand when we are here and when we are here. Uh, otherwise, discussion can be very confusing. And that's what we want to talk about a bit later. OK? Any other questions? Okay.